Are you a fan of charcuterie? Does the thought of sitting down on a beautiful summer's evening with a selection of charcuterie, cheeses, maybe a glass of wine perhaps, fill you with a lot of happiness? It does for me. I absolutely adore charcuterie. I'm a big fan of it. And today we're going to be reviewing a really incredible producer quite close to me that produced some really, really delicious, phenomenal charcuterie. Hello fellow foodies, my name's Dom of the Foodie Kitchen Review. This is the channel where we review really delicious and authentic food products. We give you some amazing recipe ideas and inspiration you can use in your very own kitchen at home. If you're new to my channel, it would be amazing if you could hit that like button and if you can subscribe for more videos coming up in the next few weeks. Without further ado, let's jump straight in and discover more about this amazing brand. So here we are in my very own kitchen at home, so welcome. Today we're going to be reviewing Marsh Pig, which was set up by two lovely ladies called Sarah and Jackie. They set up this incredible charcuterie business, which is quite close to my home in Norwich, England. They set it up with a real emphasis on quality. They only use free range, which I think is absolutely fantastic. If we just look at the kind of general charcuterie process to start with, traditionally it will be made with the belly or be made with the shoulder and also the trim, which is essentially the off cuts. You'll have the main cut of an animal um, and then you'll have the off cuts, the trim. So when they're when you're making this charcuterie product, you know, it can be up to, you know, sort of 40 to 60% fat content, which is actually quite high. But the really cool thing about Marsh Pig is they, they'll source their, their legs, you know, the kind of legs of, of pork, legs of meat, which will be sourced within East Anguilla. They'll cut off the glands, they'll cut off the sinew, and then they'll be left with about 15% fat, which is, you know, directly up to them. They're choosing how much fat they're putting in to to their products and for me you know I'd much rather be interested and in eat that kind of type of meat that type of charcuterie than just be having any old you know charcuterie I don't know where it's come from where you know it may have come from a intensively reared pig which just shoved in a metal crate it's you know it never sees daylight it's on a high protein bland diet and you know and it lives quite a miserable life I, I'd much rather actually choose to eat something which is free range, I know exactly where it's come from. And I wouldn't necessarily say it's easy to actually find something which is um, on the charcuterie market which, which is actually free range. So there's a really cool little feature that I think that, you know, I think they have here. Okay, so I'm going to be reviewing four types today. I'm going to be reviewing uh, Brasello, uh, Lomo, Cortello and a black truffle salami. <laughs> which I'm really excited about. Okay, Brasello, a nice Italian air-dried beef. This is typically dried for about two to three months. This actually originates from the Italian Alps in the Lombardy region. And what they'll do is they'll take, take legs of beef, they'll defat them, they'll use their herbs, their spices, they'll cure the meat, and then it'll be aged for, for a good amount of time. So I'm now going to I'm now going to open this up and I'm going to have a little taste and we're going to see and we're going to see what we think. I'm not, I'm not going to take loads because it's probably not a good look to eat on camera. Okay, so straight away it's got that beautiful kind of roasted beef aroma. It's very tender. It's got, you know, it's got a nice, it's got a nice maturity. It's almost quite, it's almost quite a bit of sweetness as well. This is made with thyme and rosemary and it's also also got some juniper which you'll find in gin as well which is which is kind of marinated in. So for me that's that's a really really delicious taste. Okay the next one I'm going to review is lomo which is actually Spanish. This means tenderloin in, in Spanish and so this is going to be really really succulent, really delicious. This has been marinated for about three weeks in black pepper and sweet paprika, and then it's been air dried. And, you know, you can see you can see it's got some nice fat on there. So, you know, sort of straight, sort of straight away, that it's going to be. And you know, just kind of smelling it there, I get a nice bit of I get a nice bit of paprika. 
and some nice nice smokiness. Right, so let's let's just try a little bit now. You see again I get a really nice kind of intense intense kind of meat flavour and you get you get a nice you get a nice bit of spice, you get a bit of pepper at the end and it's just an absolute, absolute pleasure, absolute joy to eat. Really, really lovely. Um, this also won a great, a great taste and a great taste award in 2017. Um, you know, for me, this is this is lovely. I think you know, if you kind of pair, sort of pair this with some nice cheeses on a on a really good charcuterie board, they're just going to go down. I love, you know, I kind of love this. And when you look at it, you've got a nice sort of red tinge, which is which is where the paprika has been. And you can see you can see the layers of fat going through it. So really, a really sort of intensively flavoured, delicious meat. And next one we're going to review is the Cotello. Now this is one of the best cuts on a pig, and this is um, you know like one of the most famous Italian salamis. And really, this this kind of cut of meat is is really really delicious, and it just has that natural natural sweetness and intensity to it. So for me. You know, really, you don't want to interfere with it too much. You don't want to put loads of crazy, harsh flavours on that, and that's exactly what they've done. There, it's been it's been salted, then it's been lightly smoked over beach. So this is, you know, comparing it to the rest of the range, this is probably the most simplistic process, and and it's because you know it's a really it's a really incredible cut of meat. So we're going to open it up, and we're going to have a taste. You know, again, just smelling this, it almost, you know, just smells quite smoky, which, yeah, which is lovely. And you can see, you can see a little, a little bit of pepper on there. Oh, this one's absolutely brilliant. When you're eating it, it's just got this really, really nice intensity, and it's just so, so pleasurable to eat. It's just really tender. You get that kind of little bit of saltiness. You get a bit of sweetness as well, and you definitely get the smokiness. So for me, this is all about the cut of meat. This is a really incredible cut. It's got um, it's got a nice firmness to it. It's not too soft, and this is the absolutely perfect thing to have on your charcuterie board. Final product I'm going to review is a black truffle salami. Now, last year at the Royal Norfolk Show, they entered this in and it won the best new products. My expectations are quite high, and you know truffle is a really really delicious ingredient, and it can be infused in so many different different foods. And what they've done here is they've got a really good quality salami, free range salami, and they've infused some black truffle. So we're going to cut it off. We're just going to take a little bit here and going to have have a little little smell, little taste. So you know, just kind of smelling up there, you get a really nice aroma of, of black black truffle. Mm. And it's it's really you know it's a really delicious salami. This is our only this is our only salami that we've got that I'm reviewing today. But you can see the fat content is quite a bit high in the salami, which you'd expect. And it's really been gently infused with a bit of black truffle, which is absolutely lovely. And you know this you know this is really really nice. I think I think you know if you kind of pair this again with a, a nice kind of a kind of soft, soft kind of goat's cheese. It would be really delicious. And this is an absolute joy to eat. You've got a really nice fat content in the salami. You've got the black truffle coming through, which is, you know, quite, quite delicate, quite light, but you can definitely taste it. And I like that because truffle can actually be quite overpowering, be a bit too much, but not in this case. Really, really delicious to eat. And it's just got a really, really nice intensity of truffle. Okay, so now we've tasted all four of the Marsh Pig products. I'm now going to share a really tasty recipe that you can be using, particularly coming into summer, something really seasonal and really tasty. Okay, so now we're going to show you a really cool little recipe that you can use at home. Obviously, something like charcuterie, the quality it has, you can just eat it by itself on a really nice platter. You could have cheesy cheeses, you could have olives, you could have artichokes, you could have salad, you could have some nice giabatta with it, you could have some nice wine. There's so many things that you can do just on that kind of platter idea. 
But really, just to turn this into a bit more of a recipe, I'm going to do a nice summery salad, something that we can have this time of the year. It's all to be served on a plate. Okay, so what I'm going to be doing is just a really nice seasonal salad. We're going to be using some of the marsh pig charcuterie. We're going to be using some rocket, some tomatoes. These are tomatoes grown on the vine. We've got some lovely mozzarella. This is buffalo mozzarella here. We've got some nice gear batter, which we're going to toast off. We're going to put on our griddle here. We're going to infuse that with some Yar Valley truffle oil, which I'll tell you a bit more later. So this is really just a very, very simple thing that you can do at home. And this is, I believe, making the most of the charcuterie that we have here. So first things first, we just get the pan on for our tomatoes. So these tomatoes here, they're grown on the vine, so they're going to have a really nice flavor, okay. So we can just take the stalk off and we can just put these into quarters, okay. Right, so we just put this into quarters here, whichever whichever way you want to do it, but you know it doesn't have to be um, doesn't have to be perfect. It really, really doesn't. Right. Okay. Great. So now, right. So now we're going to drop these tomatoes in. Now, just to kind of add to the tomatoes here, we're going to add some salt. I'm going to add some pepper, okay, to add a little bit of olive oil as well, okay, just a little bit of olive oil. And then those can gently kind of roast. To be honest, we want we want them on quite a high heat. We want to get some colour there, so I'm going to whack the going to whack the heat right up. You know, a lot of people are kind of scared when the fat sizzles and when it kind of gets a little bit kind of ferocious, but really. If you want to get that flavour there, you've just got to have it on high heat, let it do itself. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to get some balsamic vinegar. And I'm literally going to deglaze the pan. I'm just going to go around the outside and just get some, some of that balsamic vinegar in there and just let that gently cook away. Okay, it's still, you know, it's still heat there. Next step is just to get this griddle pan on nice and high, okay? These tomatoes can just gently cook away now. I don't, I don't want hot tomatoes, just want them to be nice and warm. So they'll heat off, they'll look after themselves. Okay, so here we've got a nice gear batter, which I've got, and I've got some black truffle oil. Now this is from, this is actually a rapeseed oil, oil a rapeseed which is infused with black truffle and um, I think this is gonna really pair nicely with the two hams that we've got from Marsh Pig today. So with this, you know, we can just literally drizzle over the bread like this. I'm actually going to be reviewing the Yard Valley range in a future video, so watch out for that. Okay, this is probably nice, nice and hot here. It's always, always a good idea to see it on a plate as well, just so you can make the most of all of that oil. We've got the oil here, and I'm literally just going to put this face down. Okay, I can hear that sizzle already, so I'm just going to put that face down. Okay, so I've got the bread toasting, I've got the tomatoes just cooling down a little bit now. I'm going to start to assemble. The two, the two hams I've got, I've got the cartello, and I've got the lomo as well. Okay, so first, first off, we can just get some nice rocket on the plate, okay? Just be, you know, just kind of scatter, scatter it on, just to get plenty of nice peppery, peppery rocket on there. Okay, next we've got some really nice buffalo mozzarella. So we can just take, take about half to a third of this mozzarella, we can just rip it, rip it off, okay? We can just get some really nice chunks of mozzarella on there. It's just a really nice cheesy, milky flavour which really complements that kind of saltiness, that saltiness in, in the ham. Okay, so next, next we're going to take our cartello and we can just rip, let's just rip this up. Okay, 
literally just kind of rip this up into shreds. And we're going to use some of this lomo as well. Really, really delicious lomo. We can just get that on there. So, you know, this is very, very, very simple. Just to really, um, I think when you think when you have a product which is so flavoursome, so tasty, you don't need to overcomplicate it. You can just keep it very, very simple. We've got a rocket, we've got a mozzarella, we've got hams on there, we've got the cartello, and we've got the lomo on there. So really nice, really nice flavours. Okay, so next we're going to add on these tomatoes. I mean, these tomatoes they had what salt, pepper, they had some olive oil, they had a bit of balsamic, and now it's just gone into a really nice glaze. So. Traditionally, when you dress a salad, you'd have your oil, you'd have your vinegar, or lemon juice, your seasonings, but here we've got, you have know, got a lot of flavour. Yeah, we've got a lot of flavour going on there, so, and it's quite, quite high in the acidity. You necessarily need to chuck loads of vinegar or lemon juice in there, because it's, it's going well here. Okay, so this, so this bread is now done, so I'm just going to take, I'm just going to take that off, just so it can cool, cool down a wee bit, okay? We can just place, just place these tomatoes on here. We're fine for the sodium, for the salt levels, but I'm going to use just a little bit of black pepper. I think, again, just visually, it's really nice to see the black pepper. And we're going to, because we've got a really tasty salad here, we've got the hams, we don't want to overcomplicate it, we just want the hams to speak for themselves. We've got some nice contrasting flavors there. We're just gonna use a little bit of olive oil, just to drizzle over, like so, okay. And then we're going to put our going to put our bread next to it. We've got a simple, simple little bit of gear batter which has had some black truffle rubbed over it. So there you have it. This is a salad featuring the marsh pig lomo and cartello. You've got rocket on there, you've got mozzarella, you've got some beautiful tomatoes roasted down with balsamic and a bit of seasoning and olive oil. We've got some gear batter here, rubbed with some Yard Valley rapeseed truffle oil, just kind of roasted on the griddle. A really simple seasonal salad that you could have at home. You could have okay, so thank you for joining me in this video and allowing me to share this fantastic product from Marsh Pig, all of their charcuteries. Today I've tasted, I've cooked with them and I've really enjoyed doing that. So I'm going to put a link in this video to show you how you can purchase some and how you can try it yourself. Also, I'd be really interested to know your favourite type of charcuterie. So I'd encourage you to leave a comment, let me know what type of charcuterie you like eating. And I hope to see you next time. Don't forget to subscribe.